Hello everybody and welcome to another update from me, Martin. Uh, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Um, thank you for joining me for one of my update videos where I go into some of the work that I've been doing this week. Um, as usual, I want to lead in with a big thank you to all of the people that are helping me uh, spend time on Inkscape by funding my work. Uh, thank you all so much, and if you'd like to jo join them, um, you can find the Patreon link in the description for this video. Um, so let's get into the actual work that we've been up to this week. Um, first of all, some fixes. Fixed a color shifting problem that happened. Um, do you remember the crop tool that from, from last week? Um, well, we're not used to doing raster editing, so introducing some raster editing fun functionality actually caused some um, basically shifting of color palettes, and it depends upon what format you thought the image was in at the time. Uh, that has been fixed, so now reds don't become blues and blues don't become reds. Hilariously, it didn't just affect ras rasters, it actually affected cur cursors and uh, the gradient editor as well. And a gradient ed editor where, where reds become blues was a very fun bug to, to look at. Um, with the multi-page work, uh, that continues on. I've added the uh, page label fun functionality. It's basically a an option that allows you to pick. So far, I've only got two different modes. Uh, the top left-hand corner, which is what you'll see in 1.2, and the label that comes at the bottom of the page now, uh, which is basically a centered label, much larger, uh, that's always visible, that literally just says one, two, three, four, or the label if you've set one. Um, that's just going to be available, I think, as a button on the uh, toolbar. I haven't entirely decided how the in interface for the label styles is going to work. Uh, one of the things I wanted to avoid was making it infinitely configurable. Like, I don't want you to be able to place these labels anywhere, uh, but I do want some degree of configurability in terms of like what you guys suggest to me is the best place for labeling pages. Um, okay, so the a lot of the work that I did actually this this week was um, on the object and di dialogue. Now the story behind this one is that um, I actually work with a number of designers and user experience people and testers, and uh, one of the things that we do is um, we essentially do favors for each other, and. Um, as you probably know from pre previous videos, one of the designers, Adam Bellis, who's been a massive help to lots of the work that you've seen on my channel here, uh, asked me to help him improve the object note di dialogue. Um, he had a rough sketch of the improvements that need needed to be made. And so I agreed to basically spend time uh, on his issues. And um, yeah, I, I, I kind of enjoy this. I kind of like the idea that we're, we're not just doing this for money. The idea is that anybody can get involved in the, in the Inkscape project, whether you are a designer or a programmer or a person who writes text and documents things or makes videos. Um, and you know what, if we, if we ask each other for fa favors, um, that actually, you know, can, can really make things happen because um, not everybody is skilled in every task. Uh, okay, so what did he ask for? Um, so what we've done is we have improved the, uh, the the objects dialogue with some not drastic cha changes, but just like quality of life improvements. Um, we have uh, clicking on groups now no longer expands those groups. Um, it, it, it's it's it exp automatic expand expansion is confined to just layers themselves. I think this makes more sense. Um, I've added an indication to hovering. So when you're hovering over one of the uh, object dialogue um, rows, it, it creates lines um, which uh, indicate like which of the items the uh, hide and lock buttons apply to. Um, I've added the ability so that when you're selecting ob objects, the, the uh, object dialogue will now scroll to where that object is being selected. Um, this should hopefully help you, um, you know, identify wh wh where those objects are. Um, deleting ob objects didn't used to work with the node and text tools. That's been fixed. Uh, selecting, let's see, it says, oh yeah, yeah. So 
if you select a bunch of objects and then you hit the hide uh, or the little eye icon or the lock key before it would just affect that one thing that you were clicking on uh, but now I've adjusted it so that it will actually hide or lock all of the selected items um, if you hit the icon for one of the non selected items then it just affects that one item still uh, dragging on the icons, the hide and lock I I icons will now let you hide and lock multiple ob objects in quick succession. Um, there is some search fun fun functionality that I added, but it's uh, highly experimental and the user experience feed feedback is not good. So we're going to have to revisit that. Uh, but the idea is, is that you would type in a search uh, and be able to identify uh, objects by, by their name. Um, there's a some fi fixes here and there, things like the status bar uh, no longer flashes, it gives better instructions. And, um, and finally, I, I added uh, keyboard accessibility. Uh, this is so that um, when you're in the objects nerd dialog, you can actually use the up and down keys and the space bar and control space bar and shift space space bar to select objects. Um, this just allows you to be able to basically use the what's known as the cursor inside of the list view to um, navigate. Uh, usually this would be done with like a little dotted line, but because of these new st straight lines that indicate which one is hovering over, uh, you can actually very easily, um, you know, just press up space, up space, up space, etc., et and select different objects. Um, keyboard things are kind of interesting because they sometimes conflict with, with the rest of Inkscape. Um, so a lot of it is a bit a bit of a dance to make sure that nothing that we're doing inside of the object dialog conflicts, and also uh, you have to have focus on the on the uh, dialog, right? It's no good you having focus on the canvas because you're drawing stuff and expecting to press up and down, and it changing the object di dialog. Um, and I don't think we have a good user experience um, display for when the dialog has focus on when it doesn't. So I'm probably going to have to add something in to make that make sense. Um, but I'm actually very happy to have a more cohesive uh, keyboard fun fun functionality. I think it makes the di dialogue more interesting to have keyboard access, not just mouse. Um, okay, so that's basically it for the ob objects dialogue. A big thank you to uh, Adam for coming to me and all of the help that he's given me with all of the other features that he's done, things like icons and design work on. Um, now let's turn to some of the other stuff uh, that's happened in Inkscape. This is work that I didn't do, but other Inkscape contributors did do. So first up, we have a small um, uh, fix for the Windows build of uh, Inkscape 1.2.1 which uh, should fix the problems people were having with the um, ex uh, extensions manager and clip art importer. Uh, sorry about that. That was a weird upstream packaging issue that Mark and I worked, worked to fix. Um, PBS has been doing some GTK4 upgrades with things like signaling and events. Uh, we actually have a plan put together for meeting with the upstream GTK GNOME developers. Uh, which will be very exciting. Uh, we're going to get a whole bunch of developers together and just have a talk uh, because these kinds of upgrades, they're really good and GTK4 will make Inkscape really, really quick, especially on Windows and Mac. But um, it's going to take a lot of work. And uh, so we, we need to have uh, a talk with their developers. We think that that will improve our ability to actually uh, do, do the upgrade in the smartest way possible. Um, we have, uh, let's see, uh, there's some fixes from Raphael for the for flipping of the Y coordinates. Uh, sometimes when resizing uh, the cam canvas guides and a couple of other things would get out of position. Um, there is upgrades to the pattern cert server from PBS um, and the paint cert servers. This should hopefully make things a lot faster. And um, Oh yeah, so a, a is it Paolo Preit? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, he fixed the font family com combo box rend rendering. Uh, fix fixed an issue in that. And uh, Eric Liu Li or Liu uh, fixed un un underscore pl placements in file file names in the batch exporter. Um, I think that's about it. Yes. Okay. 
So that's it for what happened in Inkscape this week. Uh, please let me know in the com comments if you have any suggestions or ideas, um, especially from what you've seen here. And uh, th thank you all very much for watching this week. I'll see you all next week.